folks, some sellers have started accepting major losses. I'll get into that and then the latest home prices and insights for the city of Toronto for week ending December the 4th, 2024. You know, when I do these talks, sometimes I speak about very, very specific, exact details. Other times I talk about in more general terms. Today I'm talking about some specific, but moreover in general terms. Typically, this time of the year, sellers that are on the market and they're not getting their price have choices to make. They could, and I'm generalizing, making this really simple, they could either lower their price or accept a lower price or take it off the market and wait for next year sometime. For example, the spring where generally speaking, we see an uptick in activity, we see an uptick in, in prices. And, and, and this is the choice a lot of sellers make. In the past, when we came to this time of the year, many sellers, if they chose to accept a little bit less, like they've tried to sell through the course of the year, they tried to sell during the spring and summer, they didn't get their price then they had the fall, right? And they went on the market in the fall because we expect an uptick in the fall and they went on the market and they didn't get their price. Now, we're at the tail end of the fall headed into the winter season. In the past, they took a little bit less because it was kind of that time of the year. They didn't have all the offers. They weren't getting their number and they decided they didn't want to wait for the spring. They, because it is a bit of a gamble. There's no guarantee that your specific house will fetch you more money in the spring. And they didn't want to wait, or they can't wait, so they took a little bit less. But in the past, they just made less of a profit on that. Today, it's a little bit different. The psychology is still the same. There's lots of sellers that have, that are on the market now, that have tried to sell through the course of the year. Things haven't worked out for whatever reason. And here we are at the tail end of the fall season. Weather's getting colder. We're seeing some snow now. We're, the, the downturn has begun towards the, the, the holiday season. And if you're having few showings right now, the seller's thinking, wow, like showings are way down. Am I going to get any between now and the end of the year? And so there's sellers that are accepting a lower number. The difference between today and in the past years is that today when you accept that lower number, it, you're accepting a loss actually. We're seeing it. We're monitoring a lot of the sales that are going on. We're monitoring when we're looking for our own buyer clients and we're monitoring because that's what we do here. And we're seeing more sellers at this time of the year accepting major losses. Now they've tried through the summer, spring, fall, and now they have a choice to make and, and many of them can't wait. And again, there's no guarantee if you wait, you're going to do better in the new year. So we're seeing more and more sellers at this time of the year, just accepting the loss. They're taking that lower number that they refuse to take at other times of the year. They're just taken a lower number because they looking at their options, they're feeling the pressure and we're monitoring. We could see what they bought, what they've sold at. We could see what they bought if they did some renovations and then what they've sold at. There's more losses right now than any other time of the year. Now, if I look at the years and I look at which homes were purchased and when, it's the homes that have been purchased in the last between zero and three years from now, or three years back. I say zero because there were some homes that were closed on this year and are back on the market. They're taking a big loss. There were others purchased last year and the year before. If you bought within the last zero to two or three years, there's a big chance you will be taking a loss if you're selling right now. Ones that purchase, say, four years and, and, and older, most of them are okay. They still may be selling less than what, at a lesser price than what they were hoping to get, but they're not necessarily accepting a loss. This is the climate of real estate right now. 
Some sellers are choosing and just saying, okay, I've tried, I can't, and they're just accepting their big loss that many times will go into the several hundreds of thousands. If you think this video can help somebody you know, please pass it along. If you get value from what we're talking about, subscribe. And if you want to speak with me about your real estate situation, selling, buying, it's really simple. There's a link to my calendar here, another one below this video in the description. Click on that, book a time that's convenient for you, and we'll talk about whatever's on your mind. Now, let's get into the numbers. Here we go, folks. City of Toronto. I'm going to start off with a summary of where we are with power of sales. Up to weekend, month ending November. Well, you can see the orange. That's this year. Big difference from the same time a year ago in power of sales. We have way more this year. And when we look at year to date for 2023, up to the end of November, we had 580 this year, 1,018. That's a 76% increase in power of sales this year, year to date, versus last year. We got one more month to go. I don't expect that number to change dramatically. It's going to be around 76% more power of sales this year versus last year. Here's also a chart looking at Normally on my show, certainly at, shortly after this, we're going to get into the weekly breakdown, but this is a monthly breakdown. The last full month we had was November, so November 2024, and I've highlighted in black the November numbers, and I'm going all the way back to November 2020. And when you look at some of these, let's, let's just first of all look at sales. 681 detached properties, properties were sold. This is just for the city of Toronto for month ending November 2024. 681 is more than what we sold this time last year for last November. And it's a little bit more also than what we sold November 2022, but it's less than the previous years. So sales for two years, the sales is, are higher this November than they were going back two years ago. Average sold price for November for detached properties is 1696000 almost 1700000 Now, when we compare to last year, we're currently 4.8% higher than what we were this time, our average sold price for detached properties a year ago. We're 4.8% higher. We're currently 8.5% higher versus 2022 and we're actually lower than 2021 by 6.4%. So it depends on how far back you want to go. If you go back to 2020, we're currently almost 15% higher than 2020 prices. I can throw out all sorts of different numbers. The chart is here for you to look at. I do want to bring something to your attention because it is on a lot of sellers' minds and buyers' now, minds right now. Because we're approaching year-end, the next season for real estate after the winter season is going to be spring. And I know lots of people, I, I get the phone calls, I have the conversations, lots of people talking about the spring market. If we look at the spring market, every year, usually, we see an uptick. We see an uptick in sales and we see an uptick in average sold prices. I, but this is an average. I'm not saying your home, if you're on the market now, I'm not saying for sure it'll be worth more in the spring. I don't know your price point, your home type, what it's going to do in the spring. That's a, an individual analysis. And I'm saying that because I don't want you to take what I'm saying as, well, Santo said, my price will go up in the spring. I'm showing you what happens overall as an average right across the city of Toronto. But there are also far more upscale, far more property selling at over $2 million 
in the spring market, which helps bring up the overall average. And those properties tend to come off the market in the winter months, which tends to bring down the average. So I'm just saying these are factors that need to be considered. But overall, we tend to see an uptick in activity and an uptick in average sold prices in the spring. And this is what's on a lot of sellers' minds right now. They're individual decisions, whether you wait, whether you can wait. I'm just showing you an overall picture. This is going back four and five years. Now to our regular programming, broken down on a weekly basis, week ending December 4th. Average condo price versus the average detached price. There's a price difference now of 748,000, which is one of our lower price differences. It's normally much higher. It's around a million dollars, 900 to a million dollars. Normally, the difference in average sold price. We're going to start off with detached properties. For week ending December the 4th, 110 detached properties were sold. Looks like we are at that time of year now where sales tend to taper down towards the end of the year. 16 of those were sold at $2 million before. Like I said, just in the earlier chart that at this time of the year, the more expensive type properties tend to come off the market. Well, we're seeing fewer and fewer of the $2 million property selling, which in turn is bringing down average sold price to where it is now of 1,458,000. 1,458. 1% higher than where we were this time a year ago. The median price is 5% higher than where we were this time a year ago. For a while, average price and median prices were both kind of flat. Now we're starting to see them come down a bit. 110 were sold, 36% sold at list price or more. Listings coming down. Active listings coming down. There's fewer of these properties available for sale. There's fewer, but there's still lots. Months of inventory sitting at 3.6. Depending on how you read this, you're going to come up with different conclusions. We can say, well, if we look at the last eight weeks or so, well, 3.6 is kind of in the range of, say, the between the 3 and 3.7. So, Months of inventory hasn't really changed. You'd be correct in looking at it that way. Or you could say, well, for the month of November, the last few weeks of November to where we are now, months of inventory looks like it's starting to increase. Fewer sales. Yes, there's fewer active listings. But overall, it looks like months of inventory is increasing. You may also be right. We're not sure which way this is going yet, but these are kind of the trends that we're seeing. If next week we drop down to say 3.3 or 3.4 months of inventory, then it's, yeah, it's all kind of the same, kind of flat. If next week it goes up to 3.7, 3.8, you start leaning more towards, hey, months of inventory starting to increase. That's the whole city. If we break the city of Toronto down into nine different sections, well, Scarborough, just to pinpoint a few areas, Scarborough had 28 sales, Half of those properties sold at list price or more. Scarborough is far more competitive than most parts of the, of, of the city of Toronto. East York Riverdale, 44% sold at list price or more, close to half. 1.7 is the months of inventory. Etobicoke, 26 sales, 2.2 is the months of inventory. So some of these areas we're seeing a, a bit more of towards the seller's market or right at the bottom end of a, of a balanced market. Then you have York Mills Rosedale, 20% sold at list price or more, but based on only five sale, they've got 16.8 months of inventory. Now that's a bit of an abnormal week, but 16.8 months of inventory. Rexdale Downsview, it's a low price point of just under 1.1 million. 14%, only 14% sold at list price or more, 5.8 months of inventory. High Park, only two sales. It's kind of hard to get a, a true months of inventory. Only two sold, but 8.3 months of inventory. Here's semi-detached properties. 53 sold. Now, if you recall last week's video, <laughs> I was saying, hey, looks like sales are coming down. We're headed towards the end of the year. 
And now we have this week where sales jumped up to 53 sold. You see, it's not an exact science, folks. It's moving parts, moving everything. It's like gears. You, you never know what's happening from what direction. But 53 sold. 11 of those semis sold at $1.5 million or more. Average sold price shot way up to $1,337. 1337 is 7% higher than where we were this time last year. The median price of $1.2 million for semi-detached is also 7% higher than where we were this time a year ago. Months of inventory was trending up. It just dropped now because of those 53 sales to 1.6 months of inventory. Townhouse, these are freehold townhouses, 15 sold. One of those was at $1.5 million or more. Average sold price is $1,142. 1142 is 20% lower year over year. The median price is 12% lower. Months of inventory sitting at 2.4 months of inventory. Quick summary here for months of inventory. Look, my experience of being in a field with buyers and sellers and dealing with the freehold market, in most cases, even though we got semis down to 1.6 and towns below the three mark, in most cases, it's going to feel more of a balanced type market. But then you get it's quite a few of them now of well-priced homes sellers seem to have understood where their price point needs to be well-priced great condition great location there's a competition for these homes we're seeing it over and over and over again so it's not totally buyer's market as i hear people you know throwing that out there it is more of a balanced market across the board generally speaking thanks for watching have an awesome day